but charm is, is crucial. Knowing something about the festival or the organization or the funder that you're going to and giving them that respect will give you probably two, if not three, if not four steps up the ladder um, because people will feel like you've actually thought about what you're coming in to do. So stop improvising. In the room, 52 Jokers Wild. Hi, folks. Welcome to In the Room with 52 Jokers Wild. This week, our guest is Grania Humphreys, Festival Director at the Dublin International Film Festival. Hello, Grania. How are you doing? Virgin. <laughs> Hold on a second, George. You got the wrong name. Was it the Virgin what? International Film Festival? Oh, the Dublin Virgin International. Or is it the Virgin Dublin International Film Festival? What well, is actually, it, on, <laughs> on, on LinkedIn, on LinkedIn, it actually yeah. said the Dublin International Film Festival. So we've actually said it several times. Is it is it still the Dublin International Film Festival or is there a new title is. to it? We, no, we are, we are partnered. Our title sponsor is the Virgin Media Dublin International Film Festival. That's our official title. But I have been with the organization when it's been sponsored by Jemson and Audi. So uh, oh, oh, I like this. I, I like this. Oh. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> We're going to jump straight in on this one. Jamison, yeah, right. go on it. you have to get rid of those. Alcohol, alcohol and driving. Audi. So you're going <laughs> driving while drunk. You know, you have to get away from these. I don't, you know, I don't suppose it was at the you. same time, though. I don't suppose no, it was at the same no, time. Was it you had to drop the sponsors because you weren't allowed to you know, be associated with alcohol, let's say, or did they drop you? Who did you have? Do you remember? Oh, no, I very well remember. I mean, we were with them 13 years and they actually funded the festival at the very start. And they and the Arts Council were actually the kind of core support when it started because we're 20 this year. So it's literally 20 years ago. Yeah. And, and I you think, look great for 20. You, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and green screen included. But I, I think what's interesting about those sponsorships is, I mean, to give Gems an enormous credit, it was the largest sponsorship, art sponsorship in Ireland. And it was around around the time, if you can remember 20 years ago, when Irish cinema was filled with potential, but had yet to have that annual presence in the Oscars, you know? And yes. it was that kind of support and the level of publicity. You probably remember some of the ads they had with the dancing cinema chairs and, and you know, big kind of billboards and outdoors that really gave a kind of profile. Have you looked and, at those two now? So I can't remember yesterday. I have to remember what my trousers <laughs> on in the morning. You're asking me if I can remember 20 years ago. You know, I'd be lucky to remember to, to brush my teeth and comb my hair. Well, it's funny sorry, because sorry. I've actually been going through a lot of Super 8 video from 30 years ago. And, and you know, one of the things we're talking about film, what is really interesting about this, because Garvin keeps going, oh, George, you've gone off into the past. But what's really fascinating is I... I've actually got uh, a little digitizer that's digitizing it. And then I've got myself a little motorized real thing and it allows me to capture the sound that's on it. And I've been synchronizing the sound. And what's happened is that like my, my son was saying, I can't remember when I was a kid. Now all of a sudden he's kind of going, Oh my God, I sound like my son. He's doing exactly the same as I did. Now I understand. So, so having film as a medium, like my like VHS and hi eight and DV and, HDVD, basically those formats are gone. And if you if you haven't got something to play it on, you're, you're snookered. But the film still seems to be around, which, you know, I mean, how's that going to affect, you know, festivals? Oh, I'm gonna, actually, George, I'm going to stop for a second because I was yeah. very cheeky there and I went off on a tangent about me, my, my comb and my hair. And, <laughs> you know, but I, I'm really actually more interested in the core initial sponsor because I don't understand the current etiquette. Let's say you had... You know, Conor McGregor comes down the street there now. He's got a bottle of whiskey in his hand. He wants to sponsor next year's festival. I know Virgin are there. He might push them aside. But are you allowed to have um, cigarettes and alcohol as sponsors or does it, is, it, is it an issue at all? I don't know. Going forward, let's say. I think it is an issue. I mean, I think it comes down to what you want from your sponsorship. I mean, I think that's actually money, the most important money. thing. Very clear, no, very it's clear. not about money. No. Sorry, oh, sorry, to be sorry. Really, I, I know that you know, it was suggested that everything is about money, but it, it really isn't because you can find that actually the values of yeah. the two organizations can be completely at odds. And I would actually say that that's one of the biggest issues for arts organizations because at their core, they're usually about the art form and bringing it to an audience. And, you know, there is a similar dynamic, I suppose, for many, many kind of corporations or brands. You know, it's about getting larger, bigger numbers but how they get them are sometimes completely different. Um, and I think you, you are right. There are definitely dynamics around cigarettes and, and alcohol, which are quite heavily controlled 
So for instance, a number of these partnerships are based around the exposure that you can have. So if it's an alcohol brand, if you will target young people, for instance, will you be you know, able to do it around a music or a concert? And I mean, the one that we never talk about for some strange reason is sport and rugby and, and the big, you know, kind of five nations or the football team where it's very definitely in a separate category. We saw that when they were allowed to have matches and the arts were still closed. Um, I think the cigarette one is interesting because that has become a complete no-no. Do you know what I mean? I think that the drink sponsorship has become more nuanced. You can see how their message has changed. Um, and I think that there's a lot more subtlety around it. But I think you're, you're, you're right. There, there's definitely a kind of sense of Let's grab the money and like work out the details afterwards. And I think the one thing I've learned in 20 years is what would have been fine 20 years ago is no longer the case. You know, yeah. for I lots suppose, of reasons. I suppose what's really happening here is now like you are one that you've done the, the, the you're talking from a language of we're here 20 years. Now at the beginning, I'm wondering will you just grab the bloody money because you have to start. Now, when you're 20 years in, it's the co-branding, the nuances. Now, when we're talking to indie, like um, like I'm talking to a, num- a number of uh, indie producers at the moment, and they have their their films, and they have their teams, and they have their they have their location scouted, and they know who's going to star in it. And the only thing that's missing is the money. But the only thing, everything else, we keep on saying as an account, like keep on saying, all those other things are bills. I says the only thing you need is you need money in order to get pay these bills to create that creativity to go get that audience. But at the end, because a couple of people we're talking to are, are suddenly finding they, there was a there was a sniff of money, and now it's extinguished. And there there's fifty people headless going. We we take any money from anywhere because we want to do our art, but we haven't got the luxury of. Yo, oh no, 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 cigarette feck off at yourselves there now. And Connor, stick that where the sun don't shine. You know, our our our, our chakras aren't aligned. So, but it, it, do you do you feel for people trying to break into the industry now to keep their shorts and their features to get into the festival? It's they're keep on being told by hook or by crook, whatever it takes, make it, find the money. Or do you think not at any cost? Um, I think the most important thing is that they make the film they want. And, and then what they need to do is do something that Irish filmmakers and not just Irish filmmakers, but universities, yes. which is plan what you're going to do when you've finished it. I mean, I, I teach a class and it's hilarious having conversations with students about having decent images or a title that would actually appeal to an audience or having an actual synopsis that describes what it is in an appealing way. And so many people focus entirely on on making Make the thing that they yes. don't actually think about where it would go. The other thing that is quite funny, I think, is is this kind of smash and grab philosophy that people have around relationships. You know, I mean, not to align film festivals with, you know, dating uh, sites. We've grabbed you, drawn you. We'll have to smash you in about 40 minutes time yeah, now. But, but that's, that's, that's the trouble, because I know that I've been to one of the markets and it is like a dating thing. You've got 10 minutes to talk to this other person that could but potentially... Prepare is the point don't go with this irish thing of like oh well i'll I'll improvise and i'll see if they'll go to the bar afterwards prepare go and actually know what you want did you hear that prepare no i I love this now (laughs) we uh, what's interesting here now in the last couple of sentences is that's the you're the you not not the unicorn that'd be the billion quid but uh no you're probably the magic unicorn in the sense of you're the bit that was being missing from everyone we've been talking to in the sense of the class you're giving everyone is coming from production and operations and skill set and yeah. silo and i keep on now i'm a, i keep on saying your first story is your pitch to the money the investor to get to empower you so we're back to that conversation but at the same time it's he what the story you're pitching to him is Who's my market? Who's my sales? What's the return on investment? I mean, what audience? How am I going to get it distributed? What, how am I going to brand it? How, how am I going to partner with sales? And just, you know, it's my pre-sales. So we're finding the effort in the, the, you know, you can package that whole journey on paper and pitch and PowerPoint and all the rest of the vision from end to end. But the waiting keeps on coming in how we can spend your money on making us look great and having our story, which it's no how do you make how do you make me money so I can keep on giving you so you can keep on doing that? You, you know, and therefore branding, marketing, sales and distribution, those other yeah. functions on the other end of the chain. Are I think very, that's one of the problems that we, we had in the courses that I taught was that um, um, 
they they were again just thinking of the practicalities of how you do 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 but they weren't thinking about how how do you get that stuff to the marketplace and uh, and also they weren't thinking about why they needed to get that because they weren't thinking about how they needed to generate an income so they could survive in the world and i remember there were some students that went off and they managed to get a budget and they went and spent it on a red camera yeah. and i'm sitting there kind of go why did you spend that money on a red camera oh no because we wanted to use a red camera but how did you pay for everything else oh we just wanted the red camera <laughs> and they didn't think about all those and then they and then we've also interviewed several people and we've said to them okay how are you going to be doing the producer things oh no that's that's a producer's job i'm not that i don't think about money i just do x y and z and you're sitting there kind of going so who's going to do that oh i'll leave that to somebody else but how do you know how to trust them in what they're doing if you haven't worked out the process? The number of people that we've also spoken to that haven't even worked out a budget, not only the budget for the film production, but also the budget to how to promote it and sell it and how to go on to sell it themselves. And yet in, in similar sort of fields like um, uh, some of the gaming industries and some of the kind of people doing uh online tutorial type stuff they're actually having to think about how they market those place those things before they even get the things done and there's a big area in that but so so why do you think from from your experience of teaching why do you think that that's not happening in the film industry i think you're right i think it's about this focus on you know being out there in in the mud with a camera on your shoulder do you know what i mean and 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 the kind of the struggle um i think People have, have made really great films, to be quite honest, in the last two years because they've been stuck at home and they've had been forced to do another draft rather than actually going out and doing, you know, so there's been a bit more pre preparation. So I'd say research is the first thing. I think we're islanders. So I think we have this notion of, of kind of like, you know, our, our, our peers are the immediate circle around us. We don't necessarily learn from other international examples. So I see it all the time when people say about what their festival strategy is and they just talk about Irish festivals. They don't talk about international festivals. They don't do any research on films that might compare to theirs. And then the other bit that I would like to mention is charm. Uh, it's this underrated aspect, which is that if you start off a relationship with a festival who doesn't take your film, they will appreciate that and probably look more kindly on the next film. But everyone presumes it's about the film, whereas as we all know, it's about relationships. Um, and it's about cultivating those relationships. And it's about cleverly dividing the artist, if that's the director or the writer, and the producer to be the person who has to say, no, we want opening night or nothing, or no, we want four business class flights, or no, we won't be able to give you this until this date. And then the artist can be the person who says, oh, no, I'd be delighted to do any Q&A that you want me to do. And I'm very excited to invite all of you to plus the president. But you know, you have to be strategic about it. It's this kind of idea that festivals and exhibition are some kind of amateur playground or or the opposite, that they're locked away in some kind of space that you'll never get access to when it, it's actually very easy, you know. But I, again, it's about thinking beyond what your your film is. You know, is it just a calling card for you to go to the stag's head and say that's what you were doing for the weekend? Or is it actually going to be something that you're going to turn into a career? You know, yeah. um, and I think that's part of it, you know, is the idea of understanding that it is a career that needs to be tra treated with the same kind of focus. Do you know what I mean? Uh, the we, people would. we were talking to, sorry, sorry, Granny, we were talking to uh, Judith Blackburn of the Chicago Irish Film Festival on our mm. last show. We're actually, we suddenly, suddenly have a couple of festivals, but I think that's just the time of the year. So we, we were talking to Judith. She's 24 years in the business, uh, director of the Chicago Irish Film Festival. She's bowing out at the moment. She's leaving a good team behind. And she says, the honour to see 1,600 you know, movies and shorts and features over her span of, of being in, in charge or on the board or, or part of, thereof. She said she wouldn't miss it for the world. That became part of her life as, you know, facil this, facilitating this space, be it hybrid, be it real, be it online, because she's done all three in the last couple of years. But she said, it's getting, the quality coming up is fantastic. But the mm. amount, she says, the amount she's turning away, for every 20 she they accept, there's 80 in the queue that, that she, they would have and could have took that were as equally good and had a different audience, but based on numbers. So the madness is, is those queues are getting bigger. The fact from, if for the, we're, well, my perception is the, the people in old, in the indie world currently are going, I've, I have to go on the festival route, you know, I mean, and actually do exactly as you said, mm -hmm. because there's a particular, as Judith said as well, there's a particular audience looking at who's at the festival. 
who made it through the clutter, who 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 did the planning, made the film, and got to this this top of the curve that he actually got to be seen or named or talked or interviewed at festivals. So we thought I thought festivals are on the way out because we're all online now. We're you know we can skip to YouTube. We can get our YouTube clan. No. I think after the last couple of conversations, and you're probably going to affirm that again, it's more important than ever, you know, in the sense of because this is the breakout space that's understood that sales and distributors are courting or want to know who's coming from Ireland or a further afield. You get to do that little relationship dance, in my opinion. You get to do that. You have the peacock feathers and you have you've got a chance to have a little bit of glory that's very, very focused, very branded and the, the limelight's on you. And now you've got to get that, lock in those type of relationships to get the next level of sales and distribution and further afield. Because at the same time in that festival, you eat together a budget, in my opinion. And if you don't do something with that moment, you're back to a queue of a following year to start the process again, and you have no money again. And it becomes very, very disillusioned and tough unless you broke out. So do you feel this, like the version... You know, the brand there alone is like, like you know, you recognize it worldwide. And it's a, now, now you, had it been not there, I think Dublin, you also recognize worldwide. Mm-hmm. Ireland is on the worldwide stage, always has, always will be. I think the world and its mother is listening and looking and is very curious and very interested to see what comes out of the Irish market. And, yeah. you know, it's always brilliant talent because with so many creatives. But what of the other people just behind that queue? Do you feel more could be done for them or more? we need more money, more budget to, to, to help to create? Because the audience is bigger and content is a massive demand and it's just matching money to creativity to, to, to give opportunity, I think, is, a, is that trifecta is not perfected yet for, for most people. There's a so question there somewhere. I don't know what yeah, it is. No, no, no. I, th- no. I think you're right. I mean, I think you're right. Uh, festivals are about curators. It's about distilling for both the audience and for the industry. You know, what is the best or what are your, your showcasing is the future. And I think that is very important. In relation to the kind of emerging talent, I think one of the most important things that I would see is around diversity. I mean, we have a very particular kind of, of industry and the, the kind of stories that we tell, which in the last 10 years, we've probably started to encourage new and different voices. Um, but there has been a very strict, nearly kind of career path. You know, you you went to IEDT or you did a particular kind of course and then you, you maybe apprenticed on a particular number of shoots. If you were lucky, you did a couple of the international ones and then slowly, slowly, slowly. Um, and I think the reality is, is that there's huge amounts of jobs and there's lots of, of interest around the country. And I'm linking them to everything from the studios that are now in different parts of the country to actually the fact that you have the education and training boards you actually have a number of film courses all over the country, whether they're actually in, you know, Waterford or Cork or Galway or, or um, you know, even the universities now actually have a production element. You also have the film societies, you know, and, and obviously you have a lot of action around the, the gills. Um, so there, it feels like there's a lot more kind of energy. And I think you can see it. I mean, I'm very surprised about the fact that the last three years, I'd say we've had at least four independently funded feature films which have been probably crowdfunded. No Screen Ireland support, no Arts Council support, maybe a tiny bit of money from the County no, Council. No, I'm going to stop you there for a second, Grainne, because the weird thing about a sentence is no support to these three headings. And it's not that there's no support, it's just no support for that film. Because what happened is they supported some other film and they had a budget. And when, and when they're supporting three, they can't support five. And that's where we're talking to these people go, oh, it's next in the queue. But... When I join next year's queue, I'm back in a queue of something else and I have to recompete. It's not that I get to move up a level in the queue. It's, it's well, what, what's very interesting, what you said there now is these other ways of financing. Because I, I've, I'm, I am in a couple of people now and what's starting to, I was looking at TikTok by accident about 50 times there last week. And what's starting to appear is they're trying to map fund, crowdfunding to uh, actually the name of the company in question is FF3 and they have a crowdfunding platform for film production. And I think they're, they're launching one. I think the name of the guy might be Into the Woods and Stephen Graves. I don't know these people. I'm trying to remember what I might might have heard and might have saw. Mm. But what it is, I might have got the name wrong. I might have got the name of the movie wrong. But what's very interesting with it is 
it's going to be crowdfunded through crypto blockchain on a fin fun, a platform that this is the first one out the door. I think it's actually nearly fully funded already. I think there were three grand. They were asking me for three grand. He says, and then they'd be fun. I says, oh, well, I don't have three grand. I don't know what, how, what the funding was asked for in total. Was it three million? Was it 30? Was it 300? But it only went live a week ago. It's already funded by what I'm hearing. And that was a tester. And it's opening up this other market of people that, no, I couldn't even, I want to pry an NFT prize. I don't, I don't even know what an NFT is. But the same conversation came in to do with the film. It was, they had to come up with NFTs to, to engage with this language of crypto wallet, blockchain, and, and Ethereum e or something. And, and for me to be an investor in that market, I have to have my wallet. I have to be you know, comfortable with, 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 with Bitcoin and stuff like that. But what it's pushing it back to is real world asset class of investing in film and breakout, you know, tracking your 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 royalties through, through the IP of, of an NFT associated with a film. Now, I don't know what half of that even means. Well, actually, I know, I, I, I know that I was reading up on this and the more I read up on it, the more and more confusing it actually becomes because it's, it seems like a minefield. And, and going through the kind of filmmaking process is, is bad enough in itself. Yes. The, the way that they're, they're talking about... I mean, one of the problems that they were talking about with the NFTs was that if I drew a piece of artwork, I have an original piece of artwork that has some kind of currency. Once to digitize it, it doesn't matter which. It used to be, let's say, if we went to VHS, if I copied a VHS copy of the last one, it degenerated and, and went, you know, it became worse and worse and worse. It doesn't matter how many times I copy a file now digitally, it's exactly the same image. And the problem that you've got is who has ownership over what. And if the artist is still trying to keep their IP on that and, and sort of, you know, there comes a confusing part of who who is the owner of the asset in the end. You know, I've... Well, actually, no, sense, well, George, that's the very thing. The whole point of the blockchain and an NFT is, is who, who owns the NFT... That is a unique asset that can be tracked and traced for its royalties throughout all countries and territories over time. And they see the answer to financing film and attracting new investors is this market are comfortable with a little bit of gambling on the currency side, the asset side tied to real world income potential and ownership of a film and its IP and its future royalties. That's my interpretation of reading it for three yes, minutes. But, but, do but you, one of the I suppose, Grania, do you have any understanding of this new Bitcoin funding thing. direction for films, yeah. I suppose? The only thing I would say is is that it, following on your line about our, our colleague in Chicago is that if you watch as many films as I do, then you realize that the people who are making the films for money are basically never going to get that money back because That's the right. kinds of films yeah. that you're describing are being made on a kind of algorithm, which is usually made by someone who thinks that a, you know a Korean audience are just waiting for them. Um, and that's the problem I would have is actually about this. You now, what I was going to say about the crowdfunding one to, to come back to talk about what that effect yeah. it has on the film is that they are often more fresh and more connected to a younger audience than something that has gone through one of our state funding structures. Yeah. Because yeah. the structure and the you know management and the production kind of like design of that particular funding scheme, you know, can and not always obviously, um, you know, inhibit. Whereas actually these people who are making this film, some of them, as I said, with their you know, local credit union or have found their own way of doing it, you know, possibly are more aware of exactly how far that budget will go and what it can do. Now, you know, there are some breakouts and then there's others that you, know, you just wish had had a little bit more time. But what I'm interested in is, is the numbers that are growing year on year. As I said, it seems that there's like three, four, five feature length films of very high quality. And I think what's interesting is, is those people are making them to go back to your comment about the red camera. They, they are a bit like the old, um, was it Coppola, you know, making Dementia 13. You know, they're doing it yeah. with the equipment from the week. They're doing yes. it at the weekend, you know. Yeah. So the quality of this kind of material is, is better. Um, and, and that's kind of fantastic. But it, it, it's, it's more about the idea that there's a very growing and I think increasingly more visible kind of non-state funded um, you know, features being made. Actually, I think really that was a brilliant ground up, Grania, because uh, well, you've just educated me. You're, I can see now that you are a lecturer. I've just, I, 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 I was trying to enunciate and <laughs> I don't know why I, I was trying to verbalize. I don't know what the hell I was trying to do. But now what what you've said, and I've actually heard you, thank God, because I listened for about four, four or five seconds there, is the crowd, you have the state route and they're going, I'm seeing as an accountant going, 
we ha- we're trying to get 20% for free here, 5% for there. If we get the right format, a presentation, we get this, get that, then we sell that. The fact we've got the government support and all the rest, we'll pitch that to this investor over here. We're the one the government and national or the nation's behind or the state is behind, the civil service is behind. No, the crowdfunding bunch of, we're talking to our audience. We've actually done a pre-sale. We've got them to give us our money because they believe in what we're talking about and going to do. And the more we got in our crowdfunding, so the, the, what the interesting thing there is, is some of them are going in for five grand, 10 grand. Did they crowdfund a million? Because that's, that's what I was really getting yeah. back to. The technology on the, on the FF3 and the blockchain was, no, it's a crowdfunding platform that enables you with the hottest item of the moment and language of breakout on a worldwide schedule, uh, basis is the language of blockchain, crypto, NFT. That's everywhere you look. But if you can wrap that and get to talk to that audience, it just all you're really doing there is, is pitching the same thing and their wallet is Ethereum and, and, and not Euros and, and Copex and, and the Cougarans. It's But what you've done is you've sold, you've pre in my book is you've marketed, you found your audience, your first sales, your pre-sold, they believe it's investment, and you and you were doing marketing 101, whereas this other way was you're in a queue, if you didn't get it, it was over. And you had to join the queue again. Or 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 which is or interesting, is it that or is that you're you're in a structure whereby it's all about releasing the first image. And then you may be allowed to have a website and then you may be allowed to announce that you're actually going to be in a festival. Whereas I suppose what I'm saying is is yeah. the other route allows you to, you know, as you say, grow and actually get funded by the potential future audience, which is not necessarily linked to Ireland. It can be international. And the other side is, is that they are very definitely pitching internationally. You know, they are very, very aware of their audiences. I mean, I know a lot of the younger filmmakers that I'm speaking to are, are working in kind of co-op kind of structures, you know, and they kind of like operate around a website or they kind of like host other filmmakers. Their networks are incredible. And again, very much either kind of like, you know, very broad based or very kind of like specific around a particular genre, a particular age group, uh, kind of nationality or kind of community. Um, And then the other thing I think that's really interesting about it is, is that they do know TikTok and all of the kind of really, really powerful kind of like systems. You know, they're unconscious. That's the way that they actually do it. Right, Grania, you, 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 you opened it up now to your TikTok. Do you TikTok? Do you, are you on no. TikTok? Why no. not? I, I think Why not? We Why haven't to... you done the 15 second dance? <laughs> yeah, so, I'm well, actually, the 15 watching second... two hour long films. That's the trouble. Yeah. I, I think one of the, one of the things films. that, um, I mean, what you're reminding me of there is, and I know we're going backwards, is Charles Dickens didn't sell books initially. He sold, we've got used to his books, but he sold weekly uh, chapters that went out and i think a lot a lot of the youngsters what they're doing is they're working together to produce smaller items that they can then build up later on because then they've got a reputation of what they can do and achieve because they've already built up their audience then they can take the next step to do bigger and bigger things and get those things uh produced and i know i know garvin doesn't like this but that's how we did that's how we started off 30 years ago we made about 14 short films, but we interacted with a group of people that we had as a community who were prepared to offer a certain amount of type in exchange for a certain amount of time. And there was a value. It's just that the money didn't exchange because it didn't need to. And then eventually they began to realize, well, we've produced so many of these shorts. We can now produce feature. It's the length of a feature film. Why don't we produce a feature film in the same process? And we actually prepared something and went out and shot it. And people contributed their time because it didn't affect them financially you know, they could give a few hours here and there. And we put together what would have been a budget of uh, three, 330,000 euros. And we made a feature film and we were successful in making that feature. It, it, we didn't have the platforms that you have today, but that was a way that a lot of people were trying to find how they could fund their films if they weren't able to get the dream, you know, the green dollars coming along because Otherwise, in many cases, they were just going to be stuck and they'd never get the money to make their films. But they found a way to collaborate in that cooperative type way. And I think that's that's an important part. Actually, I think... Your... Go on, yeah. No, just what you've reminded me and what Ron was talking about there is that to remind me of a couple of things I'm at the, you know, seeped into my you know, line of vision in the last couple of days. I think I mentioned it to you, George, the other day. And yeah. to Ron, you, you, because of where you are in the industry, might know more or be more, it might be more evident of, it's where is the future going? And it's all, no, the count to me is saying, it's if you don't have the budget, 
you've got to be very creative with what you do have. Now, yeah. that, no, we know that. But at the same time, you're being led. There's a little bit like Rain Dance seeped something into my profile the other day, and it was saying there's a little competition for the 15 second story. And you're going, well, 15 seconds, that sounds like TikTok. We know you're trying to get social media here, tag you there, put a hashtag in and get you on TikTok indirectly by stealth by you running this little competition where I get a membership to Rain Dance. Now, forget that. Someone else seeped in and said, we want long shorts. Not so that to me is shorter features, but not shorts, but longer, but 20 minutes of something, not 10. Uh, so it's back to, well, that's just going to be a third of the price of 60 or 90 minutes in terms of you need to get it. Entertain us quicker. Keep us entertained longer than that. Spend enough, but not too much because that the rest of it was just fluff. It's coming back to, do you think, that, you know, in what you're evidencing from lecturer, teacher to being with the, with the festival, the TikTok generation and the, the, the attention span and the, and the, and the, you know, you, when I'm watching Netflix, I'm doing 12 episodes in a row till four in the morning. It's give me the content, keep it, sir, keep it, keep it entertaining. And as oh. soon as you've lost me, I'm gone to something else because I, I, I change. So do, do you, you, do you think there's going to be more, you know, less you, not the YouTubers as such, because there's lots of people I keep saying, yeah, you can get out there and make a YouTube and have your following. It's no, we want to keep it to, you no, know, you are a filmmaker, but you've got to go have your social media because where your, your, where your audience is, you need to be, and you need, they need to be, you need to be connecting with them and, you know, that type of thing. So it might be long, short, short, longers, not necessarily 15 seconds or something, but that says you need to be here, there and everywhere. What's your opinion on that? Um, the first thing is, is 15 seconds isn't a, isn't a film, uh, would be my, my first comment, right? Good, yeah. um, and the second thing is, is I think that everything is cyclical. I mean, if you think about kind of like, you know, TV and, you know, widescreen in the 50s America, etc. So, I mean, my biggest issue, and I remember we faced this last year because we just at the very last minute we had to turn the festival online and yeah. every film went online. And I really hated it because the, the idea was that all of these beautiful films that should have been seen on a big screen were suddenly on a small screen. Yeah. Um, now, having said that, we'd fantastic. You haven't audiences. seen my TV, Grant. Yes, yeah, it's sort of sixteen foot <laughs> I, long. I don't. And... We're not getting into a conversation about size. It's too early. The reality is, is nothing is as big as you know Savoy One yeah. or That's the my ego, Ibex, right, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no. But I think what's really interesting is, is that I, I and I'm I'm hoping that I'm wrong about this. Is that people are making films for the small screen, um, partly because they don't see films on the big screen. And when they go to see them on the big screen, they actually realize that it's an art form. And when it's on the small screen, it's something else. Uh, it could be an industry. It could be an entertainment. And I believe that we need to have some Irish filmmakers who want to make art films, who want to, yeah. to embrace and challenge the art form. But Not then you have to have it funded separately. Because yes, you do. That's yeah, it. yeah. Yeah. Yes, I mean, you one do. of the biggest problems I think that's happening is and about is the simple landscape compared to portrait and everybody because they're using their phone is now shooting everything they shoot video wise in portrait which limits its potential to get anywhere i mean i've had people go and shoot some wonderful stuff for a documentary and i said i can't use it you've used the wrong format uh and and they don't seem to understand you know but those people that are as you say filmmakers i mean they are I mean, I know you're talking about the Korean films a short time ago. My wife is now watching Korean TV shows and she'll stay up. She'll binge watch for five or six hours an episode. Uh, and she'll actually love watching the, the subtitles and she's listening to the Korean voices. And she got te teach it, talking to my niece, who's about 29 at the moment, and she's doing exactly the same thing. So this this idea that we're only got a short attention span is is actually complete nonsense. Most of us have really long ones, and we are choosing to go for these longer, longer stories. And we are investing in the characters that we're watching. And if you like, I watched a six part episode uh, series recently from Holland or somewhere, and I got frustrated at the end that it didn't deliver what I was expecting because it, it just didn't. The story didn't develop. Um, and I do know, having taught 16-year-olds and 17-year-olds, that they think the and same Garvin. way. Yep. Yeah, and Garvin, that they think the same way. They want, they want to get immersed into a story, which is why you'll find a lot of the kids playing games, that they can just control the narrative and do stuff that lasts for hours. We've, we've got a granddaughter and a, a grandson in Canada, and one of the problems that we're having is we're getting to see these little story things from Facebook or Twitter that last two seconds. 
we haven't got time to look at them and we're getting more and more frustrated because if you'd got a still image in front of you, a cardboard one, you'd sit down and look at it for ages. We're being deprived of all that and getting more and more frustrated. But the, the algorithms are saying that we, and they are just algorithms, they're supposed to be stories in themselves, are telling us that we, we can only have three seconds of this or five. It's the same as what you were talking about, Garvin, with the different funding bodies. They're restricting and pushing us in directions that we don't necessarily want to go. And I think that's where there almost needs to be a rebellion. And feel like it's, Actually, now, George, the weird thing is, you put me back on the question I was trying to arrive at earlier, as because the accountant keeps on going in and back out again. Yeah. I don't want to let the accountant out. And he just keeps on coming out and I'm going, <laughs> the thing here is we talked about the artist. So there is, there always is a place for the cinematic, the artist, the, <clears throat> excuse me, they're showing their, they're trying to show their work, their art form through their medium of sound or camera or lighting or all on the acting, the company. And this is the platform. The, the, the film is the platform, the testimonial platform to show their art and their, and, and their personality through it. But as you said, if it wasn't funded, that doesn't happen. Now, if they can go into a queue, that's going to be, they, they, they're recognized as artists and that's what they're going to deliver and there's funding there for it. Brilliant. But what I think is starting to happen and everyone will probably agree or disagree is because of the OTT platforms, Netflix, the Amazon, so all the rest of it, if it does, you know, Cowboy Bebop was out there, they spent 70 million on it or 50 million and they pulled the first seed. If it doesn't deliver in a week, it's gone. They've got so, yeah. and at the same time, you have, like, like what Judith was saying from the Chicago Irish Film Festival, she said, that you even get onto the platform. If you didn't search under its name, you wouldn't even know it's there and it's gone yeah. and pulled. Yeah. But they'll block you on every territory, every country, every year. They'll give you a minimum upside. And then if it doesn't suit, they'll pull it, but they'll keep the IP. So it's all about you have, they're the doorway to, to 100 million and 500 million audience that they'll block you on if it, does, if it doesn't suit them, if they gave you open access to it. In the absence of that, you're trying to build a YouTube audience. And again, you're, you, weren't the, you weren't the expert on algorithms or SEO or pay-per-click, and you didn't have a budget for it. You've, unless there's something is pushing it, and that's to bring, I suppose, back to the Virgin um, Film Festival, you have some hope if you had a festival route, that you had a couple of badges, you won some awards, you're able to seep through the algorithms. You're, you're connecting with these other people, which might give you the second budget and the second push. But if, as the accountant, you, you, you were taught, you got the money in the first place, and you weren't under the artist's head, and you got, this bunch got paid to do their job, the only place that's been, person has been shot for so far till, he, till he's way past the break even and someone's watched the damn thing, be it on long or short form or widescreen, is the investor. Those guys will not get burnt a second time. They're hard pressed to come by to invest in indie production anymore. They left the market two or three years ago before COVID. Now, I'm only talking about, let's say, five million under. I'm not talking about those good stories that have all the relationships that can get the funding because the A-listers and B-listers are involved. It's, in, it's the next layer of people that need to get finance to show their art form that don't have a, a, a support from the government because someone else has it before them and they can't wait 10 years to get it and maybe never get it. So do you feel there's, it's back to the money? Can we pre-sell? Can we, Actually, to co-ops, the great thing you said there was co-ops and community. They're getting together. That's what we're evidencing. People are coming out from writing, directing and acting and they're getting together and going, we're the team. We can all work together. We're all aligned in our vision. It's horror. And we, we, we know we've got a skill set in it. And we, we're now, we've got a community and, and, and we're going to self fund, and we're going to, and, and we're going, to, and that's our pitch for the bigger budget. It has to be a bloody good ten minutes or something from this team of people with our art included to get to get that award of that festival. Do you feel people should have more awards, more festivals, less festivals, or would you dilute by having more festivals? I think there should be better festivals. And I think there should so, be more yeah, Irish virgin, films. No, on, there's a better one required. <laughs> no, I just mean, I just only mean, messing, only No, 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 but I, I mean it sincerely. I mean, it, like the biggest problem that Irish filmmakers face is the fact that they make films for the most part in English and they're immediately competing with American and British cinema. And, and they have therefore tied themselves into a particular dynamic, which they then have to try and escape. So if you look, for instance, I did an Irish season in Korea to go back to Korea again. And it was basically provoked by a taxi ride into the hotel with a guy who just told me that once was his favorite film. And we brought, it took six years when we got the Irish filmmakers and everyone, Neil Jordan, Jim Sheridan, John Butler, uh, John Carney, they all came out and it was huge. 
But who knew that Korea was no, actually hold, a great hold on audience a second. for I our wonder, wonder, so, What wonder on once was the song? Yeah, you know, so the music loved, got a further audience yeah. that then subsequently got the audience to watch the film. You know, yes, it, but what I'm I saying think... to you is, is that nobody capitalized on the fact yeah. that there was a film that was reaching an audience and nobody yeah. said, let's do another one. Let's try and create and cultivate that engagement. There, there was a very and interesting thing. I that about thing. South America as well. Yeah, you know, one, uh, one of the things that happened at that particular point in time, because I know um, I made Fiddler's Walk when Once was made. And uh, one of the problems that we were having was is was trying to get your film seen by people. Um, and what happened in the funding rounds was if you happened to be Danny Boyle or you happened to be some other big filmmaker, you were given a budget to go and shoot on DV. Uh, and, and he went and made, you know, that, that uh, 28 days. Uh, I'm not sure. It's somewhere around about that sort of time. And what was happening was that if you were if you were a big filmmaker, you were suddenly getting the the, the funds to make these low budget, you know, you know, they they were the ones that had access to the thirty five millimeter. They had access to, you know, the high end digital f formats. It was the it was the underground people that were trying to use these other forms, and that circumvented, I think, because it pushed those budgets up, and then all of a sudden it undercut um, all the other filmmakers that were trying to do stuff that they then had to struggle to get because they were now competing with the big boys again. And it seemed that every single avenue that you took, you were you were fighting with the the big boys who were then getting in and taking the funding. Because even with the crowdfunding, I think it was a lot of it, it, there was a, there came a point where a lot of Hollywood film uh, film producers or actors suddenly went in there and started using that to get their films funded. And they almost kind of wrecked that system for the for the the, the 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 guys down below that we're looking at how do we get them help you know to get their films made, and that that was a big problem. So again, it, it, that seems to be happening in waves. When there's an opportunity that opens up, all of a sudden Hollywood and the big guys come in, and they kind of by coming in and swooping in, they kind of decimate that area, and then go off and carry on making their own movies. So so there is a I think a ploy to try and wreck that those avenues for the low budget filmmakers to try and, you know, it's just, it's just an observation that I found uh, over the last 20 or 30 years, because there have been underground filmmakers trying to push their wares out there to get a, to, to reach an audience. And then someone's come in there and, and kind of muddied the waters for them. <laughs> There's a fantastic though. I mean, I'm just thinking about when um, Simon was in the CEO of this, of was it then the Irish film board? And, and obviously one of the, the kind of focuses was around horror and, and, and bringing in a kind of horror element and encouraging filmmakers to, to make films because they were an established genre. They had a network of festivals. There was an audience there. And, and it, it feels to me, I mean, that that is still a strand that is a very important kind of, you know, has a very important strand within Irish cinema. Yeah. It's a place where a lot of filmmakers make their first films. Some have returned, like Conor McMahon, to make their second and third films. You have a lot of new actors coming in. They go to Fantastic Flicks. They go to Sitges. They have an international audience. And um, because it's horror, it's seen in a particular way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But it yeah. is very yeah. definitely reaching out. And I'm, I'm linking that to the thing that happened, I think, two years ago was in the BFI, when it felt like there was an incredible range of really strong and debut features from from um, women directors, which all had a kind of supernatural, where they horror, where they kind of psychological drama, mm. that again did really really well. Do you know what I mean? That you actually found that there was, but again, it's this feeling that they just popped. Do you know what I mean? Rather than actually yeah. being part of a long range kind of strategy yes. that maybe is the yeah. bit that's, that's being missed. You know that you're able to capitalize on. Now there is a fun interesting one because you, I don't know. Again, I might be throwing on straws and connecting dots that don't connect. But Jude had mentioned, I, we asked what the weighting was of the festival. And she said, at the moment, we're back to 60, 40, 50, 50 men. Now, two years ago, she said, there was an awful lot of women producer, director, writers. Uh, right. Now, at the same time, we start thinking of what's been pushed internationally and nationally was diversity you know, through all the various funding bodies. So you had a bit of extra funding, potentially, maybe last year and the previous year, that was directed and pointed at women in film and or new breakout women doing X, Y, and Z. And that was then subsequently reflected in various film festivals through what was seen. And that, as you said, that pop. Now, it, you can't continuously put the waiting in that going forward because then it could be seen as discrimination the opposite way. You know, so I, I think, think that's already happened. I think, I think that's I think, already actually, happened, actually, to be I, quite honest. Now, here's something interesting, Brian. Myself and George went out here three years man. ago, and we feel... <laughs> 
totally discriminated against as 55 year old bald yeah. white fat men but like, no we don't know about him me anyway but i'm just saying i i thought i had to start like like literally trying to get the drag on to be to be even noticed to have a conversation because we're not the the, the target audience of funding yeah. Or break out, no. even though we might have skills or something. No, it's, 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 it should, it should um, be the art and it should be the story. Yeah. And it shouldn't be the individual in my books. Let's go back just a few moments there because because I think it was really good to get your perspective there, Garvin, of, of how you feel from, from our perspective as men, Unloved, supposedly. George. Unloved. Yeah, unloved. <laughs> but let, let's get your view on that, Grania, because you looked as though you had a specific point that you wanted to put across about what the problems were there. Could we could we hear your as your your view on that, because I think that would be quite important at this stage. Well, it's like I was saying earlier, like the problem is, is, you know, I'm 51. I've been living in Ireland for all of my life. Do you know what Jeez, I mean? Jeez, you're great. Kind of Where did you get your hair done? My, 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 my wife would love to know. I would, no, we, 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 in a couple of our, sorry for interrupting there, but in a few of our different uh, shows, you know, there was lots of women in front of us and we're going, oh, she's young, she's old, and they nearly have to have a guessing game of age. But, <laughs> I would have put you at 31, not that. Aww. My God oh, almighty, you, go. you got to Thank sell you, whatever it is, you, whatever your regime is, you, you got to get on the TikTok, say your daily regime for your skin is, I think you'll make a fortune. Sorry. Hang on, Garvin. Let's you, just, because that's another marketing point. I, I want to get back to the point that Grant was <laughs> actually trying to make there. Well, it's just it's just purely, as I said, that our, our you know, my experience of going to the cinema, you know, started when I was whatever. I, I think I saw Abba the movie or Watership Down or whatever, right? And it was in the old Adelphi, you know, on 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 um, in Dublin city centre. And you know, they're gone now. And you know, and a lot of the kind of like ways in which you see films have actually changed as well. And what I'm really surprised about is that you meet lots of people who want to get into the industry, but they don't see themselves on screen. They don't see themselves on screen, or they don't see them in roles behind the camera. And I think that's what's really interesting. You know, is is I think it'll take another year and a half. I think it's slowly getting there in terms of television production. Feature films are way slower. I think there can be something spectacularly patronizing about the way in which we deploy people into yeah. particular productions to make them visible. Yeah. Um, I think it's about supporting with a bit more integrity and a bit more authenticity and 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 circ- seeking out people who are coming with new stories and and in and and stories that come from their own. Um, experience and perspective but it takes a long time I mean I think you know as Garvin said it's really interesting to see how the shift of focus to supporting women did result quite quickly in changing that those numbers you know I mean obviously it took away a whole chunk of other films uh, and visibility from different sectors but it's it's moving in the right direction and we have to keep that challenging aspect Um, but it is hard because, I, you know, I think anyone who's a programmer watches a lot of films and goes, God, that's brilliant. And then suddenly goes, oh, God, I already have four. I need to try and think of something that actually will bring yes. in this particular group or appeal to this particular audience. And then the other group, because you brought it up, is older people who do not exist, um, you know, unless they're about to go to Switzerland. And I say that as somebody who has two films yeah, go on, that has yeah. that subject. We you can know, go there. Right. Anyone Notice, over yeah. 80 is going to Switzerland and is yeah. trying to get their family to support their decision. And I really hope that it's possible to have stories about people in their 70s that does not involve dementia or, as I said, uh, assisted suicide. So that that's what... No, fears. actually, I like, where, uh, not, not, not what yeah, I like yeah. where you're going when you're 80 to Switzerland or, or do a bit of skiing. That's what I'd be doing. I don't know what's going on over there. But but no, actually, you've just touched on, I think Tommy Turner was on the other night and just woman was on talking about dementia and all the rest of it. And she, I think she even mentioned that in it. I can't remember if I'm mixing up two programs, but you also touched on what Judith touched on, which is to back to the same thing again. There's a lot of strong stuff coming out of Ireland being represented in the Chicago Irish Film Festival, but it's under the headings of diversity. It's under what was funded and it's represented and there's nothing wrong with it, but it's, in my opinion, if I'm not interested in it, Where's me come? No, she did say there was two horrors, one comedy. So I am in that audience. It's back to what audience you're in. It's not that the world is made up of different people, different colors, different races, different religions. Yes, it should be represented. But at the same time, it should be entertaining. It should be informative. It should be worth paying for. Because if it's not, it's just doing it for the sake of doing it to tick a box, you know, out there. If it well, didn't no, I, have I, an audience. I think, uh, 
I, I mean, you need to start watching a lot of Korean shows, Garvin. You really, really. No, do, I actually because... no. I stop, George. I was going to say, <laughs> I believe you have an Irish film maybe opening this year's festival. Don't say this. Tw- what year it is? But what is? I wonder if we swapped out Korean subtitles, is it as good? Will it translate? I haven't seen it. I don't know what it is. But what we have is I'm going to need it's English brilliant. subtitles for it anyway. Sorry, the reason but- it's opening the festival is because it's an amazing film. It's close. Brilliant. Yeah. No, it so is a masterpiece. So can we swap a- Irish, so- Irish? There's going to be English subtitles on it, is there? I don't know. Because it's in yes, Irish. It's in Irish. Uh, and it will have English subtitles. But I think... Can we put Korean the, the ones in instead so we get confused? <laughs> No. Well, I think the thing is, what, what I think is really interesting is, is that actually the Irish films, the Irish language films have been doing extremely well internationally and have been selling out in yeah. festivals because there is a, a kind of, you know, a niche around them. And yet the That's films it. themselves are not weird. niche, yeah. which is yeah. really interesting. If it had been English, it wouldn't have been the same. That's, I, I, I think. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I think, I mean, in the case of, of on Colleen Kewen, for instance, yeah. which is our, our, our film, it's, it's an incredible film. It's based on, an, on a, a novella by Claire Keegan. So it's a first time filmmaker. It's got an astonishing performance by a young girl called Catherine Clinch. So it's got all these elements to it that are incredibly kind of like powerful. It doesn't need to be, I think, further ramped up by yeah. kind of a kind of flag waving aspect that you should see this because you have an Irish passport. It's mm-hmm. an important film by an important filmmaker who, if yeah. he was Scandinavian, or Korean, or you know, coming from from Kenya, you would hope that he would be given the platform of opening night. But That's I'm more the interested thing. in the it's audience. The story. It's the story. It's the acting. It's the setting. It's the it's the art form that's been that's coming through it. You know, well, I, I do help. I get. I know we're talking about. I keep going back to the Korean things, but what I'm actually finding fascinating about the Korean stories is one is the inventiveness about how you connect characters through a story and how those characters appeal to every audience. The other thing is that we're beginning to understand the Korean culture a lot more, and it, it's, it's, it's reminding of us of something that seemed to have been part of our past, and yet these are modern people, the youngsters, um, and they're telling old stories in, in many ways, but the stories are universal. We're suddenly seeing that these people that we would have no other connection to suddenly are living lives exactly the same way. They're struggling to try and make ends meet, but they're but the way that they solve problems becomes appealing to us because it gives us new ideas about how we can then solve problems as an audience. And I think that's something that that is is becoming appealing. And that's how you can you can have an audience globally because you're you're touching on the very basic things within your storytelling. But I, also, have, so I, I know what George is saying there now. I'm going to paraphrase. I can't help myself. I'm butting no, in. No, no. Hang on a well, second. No, Garvin. the question is, let me rob the no, question. Go, go, you, 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 no, 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 you can no, agree. No. You can agree when, when no, no, it no. was the question you were going to arrive at, because I think I'm sublimely picking it up. Yeah. Did you watch oh, yeah. Squid Game? And what's your opinion? Oh, on? no. Cut that out completely. <laughs> Cut that out completely. That's no, where I, you I, were going. I know no, it was you not. Know it. it was not. It was not where I was going. No, I actually refused. Where you should have actually, been. Going. I, I actually refused to watch that TV series because I don't like the blatant violence. Is it Korean? That's it. a whole question. I don't know. Yes. That's, it right. is Korean. So it I is am Korean, watching yeah. Korean TV. I just didn't know it. Yeah. George is watching yeah. some Archie Party something. I'm waiting for you know Squid Game two. No, we are actually. You, watching, did you watch yeah. it? Would you watch it? Will you watch it again? <laughs> I watched the first three episodes. My partner watched the entire thing, and I haven't really gone back. But I did watch Money Heist, and I do oh, think that there is something good. really interesting that net that Netflix is doing, which is encouraging people to watch films with subtitles. We have a national yeah. broadcaster that does not show except for Titi Kahar foreign language films. Yeah. Um, so you are very hard pressed. The only place I think is BBC Four that you would actually see regular seasons of TV shows or feature films outside of Now, I'm going to stop you a second, Gronia, because you know, no, you were answering it based on national you know, broadcasters, but no one in my house or anyone I know watches any of those stations other than for the news. So they all, I, I've got Netflix, Disney Plus, I've got Prime, I've got, so the yeah. audience of tomorrow, and, and they're watching on, my kids watch them on their, their PCs, their devices, their mobiles, their iPads, they're, they're, they're gaming in the middle of it and watching a second screen. So where the danger is, and I think even BBC was saying there's a big crisis in, in England bases on, on the TV license and the funding of the national body. 
No one's watching those stations, even if they had them in subtitles in the first place. They haven't got the budget to get the programs on. They can't beat the streamers. The streamers have it. That's where the audiences are, and they're signing up in the hundreds of millions. Therefore, who are these films for? Where are they for? And the art ones might end up on TG4. I can't even find TG4. I don't no, have that. Actually, uh, let's go back a second, too, because I do think that um, what's actually happening is the news that we're getting on the main sort of national TV platforms is not giving what people want. They're, they've they've had enough of what's coming out of them. Mm. And I do believe, I, I, Garvin, you're a very small audience. You're very niche in what you actually I'm six watch. plus six, charge. I'm no, huge. You're, you're, I'm you're, a, very, you're a very small audience, yeah. But there's, but I'm finding through talking to other people that they are watching a lot of these other things and they will, they're going to these platforms because they don't want to hear about what's going on. They're fed up with the isolation that COVID's actually given them. And they're looking for other ways to actually get out of themselves and, and have a laugh. And a lot of these shows are giving them entertainment. And I think it's, it's, I mean, horror works if you've got a good comedy going on, because if you make somebody laugh and then sort of scare the pants off them, then make them laugh and then scare, you know, you really are in, you know, they're enjoying, you know, the, the, the process of having those different sort of emotions. The other thing I notice about uh, foreign films is the pace of them is slower. That gives you time to understand what's going on. Whereas, whereas unfortunately, the, the Western styled films are adrenaline, adrenaline junkies. And you just, you, it, you, you find that you can't take that after a certain length of time because it just, you know, it's about pumping you up all the time. But the, the real thing is you need that kind of flow, which but I think a lot think, of these foreign films give you. Do you not think, George, I mean, because I'm conscious, I will freely admit that I you know, learned everything about you know, British cinema, the 40s and 50s or film noir from BBC Two, you know, um, yeah. and yeah, from, I, I would from having the access, same thing. right? Yeah. So, so what I find annoying is that cinema history is effectively wiped. You know, there's like some sort of men in black moment, right? And so nothing before a certain period is actually now broadcast. The other side to that is, is that yeah. they are a relatively cheap to answer Garvin's comment. You know, I mean, you can license basically all the Ealing comedies that say for yes. the price of a pint. Right. But interestingly, what I think is interesting is talking pictures and a lot of these channels, I'm even thinking of ITV4 um, has actually discovered that there is that audience. I mean, they just there go is. back and they reshow yeah. the bonds. They go back in time and they show a lot of the kind of like popular films, even Absolutely. the kind of late night film fours. So it, it, it's, it's, there is an audience there. It's an older audience that saw them in the cinemas that wouldn't mind sitting yeah. down and seeing them again. It's that that they are absent. I'm not saying that you know national broadcasters have to aim at the over 50s, but that audience no. is there. Yeah. I mean, Touch of yeah. Mink was on RT1 on Sunday afternoon. You know, yeah. and there's not enough Cary Grant on. Well, all the Humphrey Bogart movies, you know, that we would have watched. Oh, oh for God's sake, I'm going to pull afternoon. the pair of yous into the 22nd century. Now. No, no, actually, no, 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 no. No, no I do second. know who I'm talking to. I know you love the art. I know you come from that background. You, you know, I can't, but Grania is, I mean, you just named nine <laughs> stations, which I might have pressed the button once accidentally in the last 10 years on. And I would have told, I, I, I can't even get them anymore. But, but I'm just saying, it's the audience. It's not there. You did touch in the same sense well, that, hang on a second. yes, there is 12... an audience for it. There is no, an no, audience No, 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 hang on a second, Garvin, Garvin, Garvin. Let me, let me stop you there. Because one of the things that we did was we had a, 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 a for five years, we showed 16-year-olds 12 angry men they first got angry when they went into the room because they said this was not the movie by the end of the movie every single one of those classes were on the edge of their seats and they didn't realize that that cinema was there and they could have the experience that they had from that so one no, of the I know, but is, caveat on that george you're get, you're showing 12 16 year olds in a film school film making techniques and film noir and film I, i'm talking about the mass audience the, the, the film, no, th those films were made for the mass audience at the time, and the whole world would have yeah. saw at those times. Now, I'm just saying, for to see it again, it's it's actually in those silos of, of of genre stations that will give you access at a touch of a button if you want to find them because you have bought that IP you're talking about. So they they I think they they, they are and. You named a couple of stations there to have a Sunday for an afternoon, but they're on the, the, the YouTube channels or they're on the, the, the Netflix and OTTs. They're, if people want to seek them out, they're saying, I want to watch 12 hours of, of, of noir cinema. Yeah. You know, but I'm just saying going forward for indie breakout people, new films coming out, they for them to have a career, to have a future, to get jobs or, or make it again, they have to they have to attach nearly first time out of the door to an I audience that wants to see them again. I think it. the problem is that if you don't understand your history, 
you end up producing something extremely bland. And one of the problems is if the youngsters aren't getting to see their history in cinema, regardless, right. you know, now we're they're not able to, to learn. Yeah. Because Granny actually well, no, said no, the thing is going cycles. You, it's, if you're stripped, if you actually enforce the past on the present and go, here was black and white, here was no music in the background, here was these all these 50-year-old men pretending to be 17, you know, you know, like, but what it was, was there was story, there was like Gone with the Wind. I mean, there was story, there was acting, there was, there was an audience I was going to reach. What would it, if you did it again today, without the slap bang, bang wallop and costume drama and, and CGI, engage with an audience? Because they're now being fed TikTok 15 seconds of flash and that's my entertainment. I think the answer there is yes. Yes. Would. Yeah, I think they well, would. Well, they have to be re-educated nearly. I, I think no, I think a lot there. of people are starved for for, starved for, for this that. type of thing. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Granny, you answer that question because I will answer that question, but you answer that question. It would be good to get your perspective on that. No, I just, I, I mean, I, I do think, you know, and it is, you know, sometimes programming is decided, you know, defined as gatekeepers. And you could also say that, that the people who are programming or scheduling and, and broadcasters or acquisitions on Netflix are gatekeepers, you know. And, yeah. and I would yeah. say that as many times as you get it right, you also get it wrong, you know. And, and it is sometimes about the support that you will give somebody to put into a festival or to put onto a platform that will then enable them. You know, very few masterpieces are created first time out, but some are. Yeah. You know, and it, yeah. and it is about supporting that. I think I think there's something that we're completely ignoring, which is film culture. And actually, Garvin said something earlier about, you know, you, you go to see things to be entertained I or did. whatever. And not to, you know, and my argument is sometimes if you don't like it, maybe it's on you. Maybe yeah. it's not the film's fault. And, and, you know, you should go. We should try and open up a culture for people to go to things and to go not knowing necessarily we have yeah. a slot yeah. called the surprise film which is brilliant because nobody knows what it is and you give a film a hell of a lot more attention if you know nothing about it than yes. if you do know everything about it because you're yeah. going because it reinforces everything you've thought about that country or everything you've thought about that filmmaker or everything that you want from a film it either delivers or doesn't and i i, I kind of feel like that's part of the problem is that we kind of put so many structures on things that they, it, they they don't breathe you know i remember the old days if anyone remembers the old carlton on Connell street they used to run films for months and it was word of mouth and it was people saying you should go to see this this would be great and the cinema saying right well we'll keep it going whereas now it's all smash and grab and i think people are designing films for four days because they think yeah. i'll get my four days i'll get my reviews i'll get gone and then i'll get my netflix deal that's how they see the life of this art this piece that they work but it's, it's not that I see it that way. It's being led that way because they're, ne they're nearly being told if you don't get an audience of four days, we're taking it off the platform. Therefore, you won't get your funding. It's it's back that it has to grab your attention. That's what the TikTok generation is. If you don't grab your attention, then you're not going to get a second chance on because the, the algorithm is the gatekeeper. And if you didn't get a like and five comments on LinkedIn and Facebook within a time span of, you're back at the end of the queue and someone else is in front. And therefore your budget, we keep on saying we could spend five grand on this, packaging this, and we put out 200 of them a million pound worth of that, and there's five five customers. You're going, and it wasn't to do with a good story or, you know, that's why we're hoping, you know, your, your story might probably get this in 2027 when we break the algorithm. But it, it's the fact is it has to stand alone. It has to, you have to do your quality. You have to have something interesting and entertaining in there. And then the bit you're not in control of is the gatekeeper, the algorithm, and the budget for branding and marketing. And if you cannot court the, the, the gatekeeper or the algorithm, it doesn't matter how good it is, it'll never get seen or heard. Because that's the avenue to see and hear in today's world, unfortunately. And there's some great stuff out there, but no one knows. And we're the particular case in point is, we're absolutely fantastic. Nobody knows we're the best things in sliced bread. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on that note, <laughs> we've actually gone well beyond the hour and uh, we'll probably have to bring this show to an end so that the audience can go and escape as well. <laughs> They're not watching what's going on. At least Grania is hoping to escape. <laughs> and you can but find Grania. this on BBC Seven. Seven. It'll go out yes. at midnight Seven. on Sunday the 24th or 29th February. BBC 27. <laughs> some point. Some point. Right. No, it's, it's actually been really good. 
I, I've really, I mean, although it's been, it, it seems like it's been a tough kind of interview because we've been sort of arguing with ourselves about different, because we, we have totally different views on, on the way this industry works, I think, which I think is, it's probably good because it'll generate a, a buzz and, but I'm just as enthusiastic as I was when I was a youngster going to college in the eighties, in the early eighties. I was filmmaking. at the Carlton. I was also at the ambassador. I also used to do Rocky Horror every other week with the whole Mohican and the lipstick. And, and so I actually probably bumped into you many a time back in yep. 19 God knows what. <laughs> well, normally I do a wrap up, but what we'll do is um, I'm going to give you the last words. We'll see if we can sort of, I'll, I'll, I'll trim, I'll trim Garvin up. So if he, inter- if he interrupts you, he, he won't get a chance because I'll, I'll edit him down because I, I have the power of the editor. So <laughs> what, what's, what do you think is the most important thing that students or filmmakers should be looking at to try and get their films made and get them into the film festivals? I would say see as much as you possibly can. Watch more, you know, double, treble the amount of films that you're presently watching and and be curious. Go backwards, uh, look at your contemporaries, look at your international peers um, and refine your pitch. Because as I said, you're trying to build up a long-term career length relationship with the people you're meeting. It's not some kind of one night stand. It's about trying to get these people to definitely want to take your call or to show your films in the future. And think about Nothing it like wrong that. with a one night stand? What are you talking well, about? <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I'd say is charm. And I said that before, but charm is, is crucial. Knowing something about the festival or the organization or the funder that you're going to and giving them that respect will give you probably two, if not three, if not four steps up the ladder um, because people will feel like you've actually thought about what you're coming in to do so stop improvising you know so so stop, who, who are you, where are you from again growing you know you say you represent something i don't know who it is you know so something about this show that was meant to be addressed oh the virgin dublin international film festival that's, that's there it there you go that's, that's the one. it okay so any last words garvin just before we finish no, no, I, I, I didn't know what Grania did. I didn't know what she was talking about. Her. She didn't do much of this show. So, Oh, you no, forgot brilliant. about it. <laughs> <laughs> had a great time. Okay. And I'm going to go off it. and watch some Curry Grant. No. Brilliant. Okay, well, look, thanks, folks, for watching thanks the show and hope you'll join us again next week. Bye for now. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications.